Hello everyone, this is Country Yolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online and survivability inside of it. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something that, um, at least in the past week or so, a lot of you have been asking me questions about inside the game. And so I feel that if there's a lot of you talking about it in the game, there might be more of you that just aren't willing to ask me. So I'm going to talk about it in the video. So it'll be weapon arcs and tanking. So in this video, what I'm going to be covering is um, the basics of arcs inside the game with the different weapons, um, different taking strategies associated with those. Um, broad, um, we talked about broadsiding, which is the typical way for tanking. There is my method, which is the forward firing method that I've kind of stolen from the dual beam bank type of builds and I've adapted it to my own. Um, and, I'll, and I'll compare them, give you a general 5-3 tank type build to kind of think about whenever if you're considering this for whatever for what weapon type and I don't have it on my channel yet. And I'll give you the two cheapest 5-3 tanks that are inside the game right now. Like, like normal, the time links for all these things will be in the description. There will not be a TLDW for this just because this should be fairly quick and easy for everyone. So in terms of weapon arc basics, um, an, an arc is simply the angle from which the weapon can fire. Um, for different weapons, the ranges range from 45 degrees to 360 degrees. This arc angle, even though it looks two-dimensional, and then, like if you look at, look at it inside the game, it's two-dimensional, it actually is three-dimensional. So like if an enemy is like right on top of you, like if they're technically in front of you, or technically to the side, and you're like in, in, in your open arcs, like should have you be able to fire at them, you'll still be able to fire at them. So um, just something to think about. In general, for, for the arcs, the smaller the arc, the higher the DPS you'll be able to op optimally get out of it, if you can keep the enemies inside that smaller arc. Um, better piloting is, is required for that. Um, and so if, if you're going for a, a tank type ship that has a lot higher stats, you're going to have a lot lower turning. And so uh, cruisers off, off of go, go with beam arrays that are 250 degrees. Um, so for this first strategy, um, we'll go into broadsiding, which, you know, because cruisers, as I said, best regen stats, but worse turn rates. Uh, they'll often use, use, use beams. So for most cruisers, you'll have four weapons to the front and four in, in the back. And so you have, um, in a lot of cases, four um, beam arrays in front, four in back. And so uh, for the, if your optimal DPS between the weapons in front and back will be 70 degrees on each side of, of your ship. And so your general play style, play style is going to be speed into the action and then, then turning your ship to the side to try to keep your enemies in, in, in those 70 degrees on either side of your ship and like moving around them, trying to keep them inside, inside of that arc. Which, which in many cases, if it's a really fast ship, that's a lot easier said than done. Now that is versus my method, which is slightly lower DPS, but a whole lot easier to do. Um, so, so what do you do with this is you first off, you choose a battle cruiser that happens to have command distract fire, which is really rare inside the game, but, but there are, but there are a, a handful of them inside the game. So if you find one of those and you're able to get your hands on one of them, then, there are eight, then you're able to do this strategy, which is five beam arrays in the front, and then you have three omnidirectional beam arrays in the back, which since the omnidirectionals can, can have optimal DPS on all, on all sides, um, you're only constrained by the arcs of, of the beam arrays in, in your front um, of, of your ship. And so it's that full 250 degrees from your front weapons that is your constraint for your highest DPS. And so for your play style, you can, you can speed into the action and just as long as you keep the enemies outside of the 110 degree arc in the, in the back of your, of your ship, then you'll still keep on doing optimal DPS. And so there's, there's a lot less things you actually have to worry about. I mean, in this sort of play style, because you could still circle them to do most DPS, but you can also like keep them literally right in front of your ship and you'll still do the same DPS. So you'll have the same threat generation from your ship as well, from both sides, as well as the front of your ship. And now when you compare them between the broadsiding and forward firing ways, for broadsiding, you're strong on your two sides and you're weak in the front 110 degrees and then the back 110 degrees versus my method in which you're strong in the front 250 and weak in only the back 110 degrees. So if, between comparing them, it's really this question. Do you want really, really easy execution for your, for your tanking or do you want a smidget more DPS and have a much smaller firing arc. Um, it's really up to you. Like the smidgeless DPS really just comes down to in that the omnidirectional beam arrays, um, 
each one of them like have slightly less DPS because they lose one modifier to have the 300 and 360 degree angle on on the weapon. It's that same thing that happens whenever like if you have like a white arc cannon, um, you'll you'll lose one modifier to have a slightly to have a slightly wider firing arc for it. Um, it's not something that's an unusual inside the game, but it's something that's definitely is very much worth mentioning. I mean, like the difference here, if you really think about it in terms of arcs, it's like 140 degrees overall for broadsiding versus 250 degrees. So it does make sense that the 140 degrees, because it's less arc to be able to do your damage, it should do more damage. It's just not very much. So just something for you guys to think about. Um, if if you want if you want to build one of these and get a, get your hands on one of those one of the ships that happen to qualify for a lot of those things, you'll obviously want to have five beam arrays in the front. Um, outside of Piazza Polaron and Diffusive Tetrion beam arrays, there isn't a best like beam array for beam array subset for whatever energy type that you're choosing. It's kind of like it goes up to whatever preference that you prefer is really what's going to be the best one for it because nothing else in the game really gives you very much bang for your buck in terms of survival. There are a couple of other ones that give you like temporary shielding or temporary hit points, but Temporary shielding and temporary hit points um, is, is just temporary of, of whatever that, that is, and it doesn't, um, and, and your, um, what's what's it called, your damage and shield um, resistances don't, don't apply to like your bonus hole and bonus shielding, and so it's not really that, that valuable, to be honest. Um, for, for your five, five weapons at the front, if you have a torpedo on there that happens to amplify your damage of all your other weapons, then it's, it's okay to add that too. Um, in terms of your three beam, beam, beam arrays in the back, um, in order to get around, have a, have a, have not be, be able to have more than one. Um, you you want to find one that's uh, that's an that's an R and D craftable one, or whether that's from a lockbox. The general rule of thumb is if you can find the beam array on the exchange, then then it counts inside of of this category. And um, the other thing to think about the, to know is that if the if the beam array is not part of the set. Then that it counts inside of this category. Um, your next beam array is one that's from a mission or from reputation, um, which means that it is going to be part of a set. And so, if, if, if you follow this pattern, if you have one that's not part of a set, then one and one that is part of, of, of a set, you're able to actually have two omnidirectional beam arrays of the same energy type on your ship at once. Um, un unfortunately, with, with the six ener main energy types in the game. There is not an omnidirectional beam array for plasma weapons at the moment. Um, in, in a later video, and probably in, in, in a few months or so, depending upon demand, whatever, um, I, I will give it give like two builds that you you can do with, with a 5-3 tank. That 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 accounts for not having two omnidirectional beam arrays on your ship. Um, and then your third omni in the, in the back is going to be the kinetic cutty beam. It's from Omega Reputation at Tier Two rank. It's technically a beam. But it's not a beam. It's 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 a really weird category. Um, beam fire will does not does not affect this weapon, but overall, like it does do it, it does key up a damage extremely well with everything else. So literally just putting this in the back and adding kinetic damage to whatever energy that you're doing does add a lot to your DPS. So that's what I highly suggest to do for five three tanks in general. Now for the cheapest tanks in in, in the game. There's there there's two of them. Once again, the, the, these are five three cruisers that have command track fire because if there's a command track fire, then it's just a regular battle cruiser and it's not meant for tanking. So it's not as is it's it's not really going to be viable for you. So the first one here is going to be on, it's going to be on the exchange through the lobby store. Um, and this is one that I featured a lot on on this channel prior to Victory's Life. This is what this is this is my main ship. The Shenzhou Light Exploration Cruiser. Um, this, is, this is actually the one that got me into being willing to, to get a Romulan um, tank character. Because before like before I actually did a lot of research, I didn't think there was any Romulan ships um, that actually did have command extract fire. And so I was like, well, this utterly sucks for me. Um, I've got no tanking ships, so I, I'm just not going to play the Romulan faction. Well, I did at first, and then I realized that Anything above tier four didn't really have a command track fire besides ships that didn't feel like a Romulan ship, and so I'm like, eh, I'm not even gonna try. Um, they released these ships um, 
last year around this time. And I was like, huh, that shield bolt looks interesting. I'll go ahead and try it. And, and it turned out being really, really, really strong. Um, if, if you go to my tank tier list, um, this is in the battle tank category. This is one of those ships that you don't have to think about. It and it's an extremely strong end game tank ship. It also does decent DPS as well. It can't compete with a super high end DPS because it only has three tackle consoles instead of four or five. But it is still very strong. It also has arguably the best survival console in the entire game. Unfortunately, as, as a tank, it's not as viable as like the Pro Pro Matter Field Projector and the DPR Arm Console just because this one, um, if you activate it, you can no longer be targeted. Um, you, you're unkillable, but you can't be targeted, so it's not as good for tanking, but it's extremely good for survival. Um, and also, like, I, I never see this console on the exchange. Like, I never see this on the exchange. It's not like other lobby consoles for other lobby ships. This one's never on the exchange. So I would imagine that this console, the obfuscation screen, probably sells for a lot of money on the exchange. All right, so for, for the C store option, if you, if you just wanted to go for one C store ship, that does, that's like you buy and it's good for all of your characters on, on your account for tanking, then I would go with the Cardassian Intel Flight Deck Cruiser. Um, this, this one came out with Victory's Life. Um, the science runoff from the Cardassian pack is also a very good science tank as well. Um, like, uh, the only downside to this ship is that it doesn't have a Lieutenant Commander Science or an option to have a, a Lieutenant Commander Science um, bridge officer seat. But outside of that, it's got everything else that you possibly want for a um, tank cruiser that's that, that's of, of a 5.3 configuration. So um, it's a very, very nice, well, well rounded ship in that aspect. Um, it's obviously slightly lower stats versus an exchange or lobby store um, ship because it's a C store one. C and regular C store ships are not meant to have as good stats as the rest of those ships. Now, technically, the flight deck assault cruiser pack ships if you get the pack and then get the um, the fleet version, it is technically better than the ship. But then again, you have to buy that ship and then get a fleet module and ensure that you're in a fleet with with a tier four military provision in order to get that type of ship in order for it to be better than this one so i mean it's just something to think about but yeah that's basically all for my video it's a whole lot shorter than all my other ones so yeah like unlike normal i'm not gonna have a tld on tw um just go back to the time links if there was something that you missed or that you want to have clarification on and if you really want to realize something feel free to shoot me an email or Add a comment in the in the, the description. But yeah, that's about all for now. Um, feel free to click the links here for videos that, that you might want to watch and enjoy the rest of your day.